Nick. Hope you got what you were looking for inside my head. <laughs> that was right. I should have killed you when you were on ice. Kellogg? Is that you? What? What are you talking about? You sounded like Kellogg just then. Did I? Huh. Amari said there might be some mnemonic impressions left over. Anyway, I feel fine, so let's get going. We have to head into the Glowing Sea. Any advice? Hmm. I'm a synth, so radiation isn't much of an issue for me, but an old suit of power armor might just be the guardian angel you're looking for. That or you could buy up all the Rad-X and Rad-Away you can find from any chem dealer who's got it in stock. Let's get going, Nick. Been one heck of a ride so far. Let's see where it takes us next. You know that whole business with Doc Amari and Kellogg's memories? It got me thinking. It's just there's still some Nick Valentine history I've been wanting to put a bow on for a while now. I could use a hand if you're willing to take a crack at it. What kind of history are we talking here? Well, this one's straight out of the archives. Once upon a time in the land of Boston, there lived a king of organized crime, Eddie Winter. He was a bad man who did a lot of bad things, hurt a lot of innocent people. But he knew the end was coming, so he sealed himself inside a personal shelter located underneath the sub shop he used as a headquarters. An evil king in a sub shop. Does a meatball monster show up at some point? Yeah, from what I've heard, the pastrami golem is the one you really have to watch out for. Anyway, if you're done being a wise ass, the story gets even more twisted. The arrogant bastard wanted to cheat death, live forever, so he could come out of that shelter someday into this brave new world. Sound familiar? Only Eddie didn't want to be a frozen banana. No cryo sleep for him, no. He invested his money in some sick, crazy radiation experiment. Well, Nick, you can't be saying what I think you're saying. Oh, I'm saying it all right. Eddie Winter went and turned himself into a ghoul, 200 years before it was fashionable. Hell, he was probably the first one. And I'm convinced that he's still locked inside that shelter. Safe and sound. Ready to come out and begin his evil reign all over again. I'm gonna find him and kill him, so that never happens. You in? I, I don't get it, Nick. Why kill Eddie Winter, even if he is still alive? This sounds like some kind of vendetta. I've got memories. Of a girl. My girl. They're not really my memories, I know that. They're Nick's. But the girl, she was real. She was beautiful. And innocent. And Winter killed her. Now he's got to pay the price. So, knowing that, are you in? All right, Nick. Let's get the bad guy. Good. Now, I know where Winter's vault is, but the door is sealed with a complex numerical code. Lucky for us, Winter's arrogance knew no bounds. Back in the day, he recorded ten holotapes, incriminating different criminal associates. On each one, he hit a single number. We find all of those holotapes, we get all the numbers. We get all the numbers, we get the code. And then we get Winter. I've been putting together a file on this one for a while now. There's a pair of holotapes in here worth listening to, uh, including one of Winter's that I managed to snatch from the Cambridge Police Evidence lockup before getting swarmed by ferals. My gut tells me the Boston Police Evidence Terminals are the key to cracking this one. It's probably worth paying a visit to any of the departments you might have stumbled across.
Detective Valentine. Captain Widmark here. I'd just like to reiterate how excited we here at the Boston Police Department are that you'll be joining our investigation. Commissioner Turner has already regaled me with the tales of your adventures in Chicago. As you know, Edward L. Eddie Winter has been a pox on this beautiful city for nearly two decades. Extortion, murder, racketeering, kidnapping, name a crime he's committed. The epitome of a cold-blooded, brilliant, slippery crime boss. Fortunately for us, over the years, Winter has also developed that most self-destructive of character traits, uh, supreme arrogance. Starting a little over a year ago, Winter stopped coding his correspondences and began communicating entirely via unencrypted holotape. Each one addressed the subject in question and very clearly signed off by Winter himself. He's obviously mocking the authorities. He knows we're monitoring his communications. He doesn't care. Winter thinks he's untouchable. He's wrong. This is when the game changes. Those holotapes are the key to building a case against Eddie Winter. And they're what this task force will focus on. His crimes, his words. Total self-incrimination. Get those holotapes, and we get Winter. Message to Alexander Strelnikov. My esteemed Mr. Strelnikov, I know someone of your profession values discretion above all else. But I have to honestly say, screw that. I mean, come on. One bullet, halfway across town, and you blew Ron Trevio's head clean off. You, sir, are an artist. Are all the assassins from Russia as good as you? I seriously doubt it. But listen. Your secret's safe with me. Eddie Winter, signing off. Message to Johnny Montrano. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. You fat, lazy piece of shit. I knew. I knew this arrangement was too good to be true. Let's join forces with the North End, huh? Bury the hatchet? work mutually against a common enemy? Well, you put the nail in that coffin, huh, boyo? What did you have to do, Johnny, huh? What was your job? Sit in your car, on the corner. Keep your eyes open. If you see a uniform, you get out. Walk down the street, knock on the door, and let the fellas know there's trouble coming. Easy as pie, right? I could have got a nine-year-old from the projects to do it, but no. In the interest of Irish-Italian relations, I give the job to you. So what happens? Nothing. Nothing happens. You sit on your fat ass dribbling cannoli cream onto your third chin. You watch. You watch the uniform blow months of planning, all in two minutes. Congratulations, Johnny. You got me. You and your pals sure put the screws to old Eddie Winter. You should tell this funny story to your little girl when you tuck her in at night. In that corner bedroom, upstairs, pink wallpaper, little house on Prince Street. <laughs> yeah. Eddie Winter, signing off. Message to Robert Cooper. You did good, Bobby. The wife and girl won't be saying anything. <laughs> no worries. Hell. Once those fat life insurance checks start rolling in, <laughs> Mrs. Montrano will wish a fat slob of a husband had eaten that bullet five years ago. As for what happens next, up to you. Beach, sub shop, car yard, doesn't matter where he ends up, I don't give a shit. I just want him in the ground. So, long as Johnny Sr. never finds out what happened to his little meatball, we're set. Eddie Winter, signing off. Message to Rodrigo Palomar. Okay, my friend. I thought about it. And I've reached a decision on the Fallon's job. Your cut is exactly what you deserve. Zero dollars. Zilch. You heard me right. You get nothing. Yes, you cracked the safe. And yes, we got the diamonds. But you also tripped the alarm. Mackie got pinched, and that's entirely your fault. Now, when he gets out, Mackie's gonna want your head on a platter. I'm gonna give him your share instead. I see you're getting off easy. 
Eddie Winter, signing off. Message to Claire Pazinski. Time to start thinking about a vacation. How does six weeks in Ireland sound to you? Dublin, Galway Bay, Waterford. Maybe a week in that little bed and breakfast in Kilkenny. And don't worry, we don't have to take my cousin Stephen with us. Let him get out of the country on his own. I told him to threaten that cop. Not blast him in the face with a shotgun. He can rot in that abandoned fishery down in Union Wharf for all I care. Love you. Eddie Winter, signing off. Stay there.
Unless you're hounding for a green suntan, I suggest we get a move on.
Krasinski. Dinner tonight. Me, you, and Arthur Black. Reservations of uh, seven at the Cornerstone Grill. Don't worry. I'll make sure Arthur's on his best behavior. No stabbing the waiter for a fucked up drink order like what happened in Charlestown. Even though the prick deserved it. Love you. Eddie Winter, signing off.
What's that? Wanted to go into waste now, would we? Threat analysis. Standing down. Here. Get him.
Someone's coming.